In this video, I'm going to cover design programs for designing stationery. I'm a wedding invitation designer, and these are my favorite programs to use for different parts of the process. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to design invitations. So I have a ton of videos here on my channel and also a full course and membership for stationary designers if you want to dive deeper. So my favorite programs to use are all in the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. That's a creative cloud with a ton of different Adobe programs in it. You pay a monthly subscription. And I know a lot of people are kind of scared of this cost up front or are questioning whether you can design invitations in Canva or Procreate or some of these free or lower cost platforms? The answer is absolutely you can design in Canva or Procreate. However, if you are going to take this to a more professional level, eventually there will be a time when you need something a little bit more robust that a program like Adobe can offer. Some people don't love Adobe for various reasons. I fully understand all of them. I don't think Adobe is absolutely perfect, but the thing that I love about it, especially for new designers, is that it is the industry standard. So almost every stationary designer or printer that you talk to is going to be working in Adobe or familiar with Adobe, not Canva, not Affinity, not Procreate, not any of these other platforms that are popping up. This is the industry standard for a reason, and this is why we have an industry standard. So if you have any questions throughout the whole process and you try to figure out how to do something in Canva, it's very unlikely you'll be able to find another designer who knows how to help you with that. Or if your printer has an issue with a file, sometimes if it's in Adobe, they can just fix it. But if it's not, they might not be able to tell you how to fix it. So I know it's a learning curve. I know it's a little bit difficult. I am a fully self-taught designer. So I know that you can get through this learning curve and I think it's going to be worth it in the long term even if you you know start with Canva or Procreate or something and kind of casually learn Adobe on the side I don't think you will regret it I think you'll absolutely appreciate it I'll put a link to the Adobe CC subscription um, here just in case you need it so I have three favorite programs in Adobe. They are Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Most designers prefer to primarily design in either Illustrator or InDesign. I find a lot of self-taught designers prefer Illustrator like me, and a lot of kind of professionally trained graphic designers prefer InDesign. So all three of these programs have slightly different things they were designed to do and purposes. And not one of them fits exactly for what we need in stationary design, but I think you can kind of use them all in conjunction to get really beautiful stationary designs. So first of all, we'll start with Illustrator because it is my favorite. It was designed to be a vector graphics editing platform. I have a whole video on vector versus roster graphics, but basically a vector graphic is made up of what's called anchor points. And that's these little points and then they have vectors or angles basically telling them how to connect to the next point. So all these shapes are made by math and what that means is if you make this larger or smaller the math stays the same and this piece will not change no matter how big or how small it is. The other option is a roster image which is basically what you think about when you think of a traditional picture or something. So as we zoom in um, this is going to start to look pixelated as we blow it up, it's going to start looking pixelated because it's made up of basically tiny little squares of data. And there's only so much data there. It's not like the math, which stays the same no matter how big or small it is. There's only so much data there. So you can get a wider um, array of colors. You can get a lot more like intermingling of colors. However, you're not going to get the like crisp delineation that allows you to blow it up at a larger size or compress it down to any size without changing the quality. So there's a, there's purpose for both vector and roster images. Now, Illustrator was made to be a vector graphics editing platform. It's great for any type of vector editing that you need to do. And fonts are vectors. So this is one of the reasons that we often design things in Illustrator that are going to be posters or cards or anything with like working with text a lot. Now, InDesign is also a vector editing program, but it's kind of different. It's made more for layout. So if you've ever worked on a large publication, a magazine, a pamphlet, anything with lots of pages, that most likely used InDesign. The most popular use for InDesign within the stationary design community is for things like escort cards or address printing, where some of the things are gonna stay the same. For instance, we wanna use the same colors, fonts, spacing, but we have different data on each page. You'll also see these cute little stars that say the same on each page, but we have a different address on each page. 
So we do this with what's called a data merge. I have a much longer tutorial on this, but basically you will take um, the spreadsheet, attach it, and you'll create the styles for everything, and then you can merge it into the longer file. So this is the most common use for InDesign in the stationary design community, even if you don't use InDesign for your actual designing. Most people either choose InDesign or Illustrator to be kind of their go-to, and you can do a lot of the same things in both of them. They're both kind of made for laying things out. InDesign is made for laying out like a lot of documents that have some things in common, but maybe different info on each page. Illustrator is more made for kind of creating one or a couple documents. However, both of them work pretty well for this like intermediary of stationary design. I would say with Illustrator, the downfall is you're doing a little more than the program is meant to be doing. Like each individual piece is perfect for Illustrator, but doing all of them at once is not exactly what it's designed for. And in design, it's the opposite. You're kind of not doing enough. So all of these pieces are gonna be like different sizes. And so you would have to create each page, make them a different size, et cetera. And that's not exactly what InDesign is built for. So kind of neither of these programs is like 100% perfect, but either of them works really well. You just have to kind of choose which one you like. I personally have chosen Illustrator, so I do most of my designing here. The main reason that I like that is because of this kind of artboard layout. So in InDesign, you need to make each individual piece a different page, change the sizes on that page, and work on them kind of one at a time. Um, in Illustrator, you can use what's called an artboard. That's all of these different little rectangles here and you can move them around while moving all the contents you can change the size and and dimensions you can copy and paste them you can delete them add them etc so i really like that i can move a bunch of different elements around i can um if i'm not using something i can just kind of toss it up here for now and it's not on any of my artboards and I like having everything in one place so that's one of the reasons i prefer illustrator so in general, I'm going to use Illustrator for all of my designing, and then I'm going to use InDesign for anything that's attached to basically a spreadsheet. So any type of escort cards, table numbers, envelope address printing, anything where you want some things on each page to be exactly the same, whether that's an actual element like these stars or just like the colors and fonts and layout of everything. If you want all of that to be the same, then InDesign is going to be really good. So most of this is going to be address printing, escort cards, and table numbers. In Illustrator, I'm going to do all of my typesetting. So everything that has to do with text, everything that has to do with a graphic element, so a circle, um, a square, a line segment, anything like that, any kind of gradients, um, all of that I'm going to do in Illustrator. Um, you even have like the shape of this envelope liner. So I'm gonna do all of those kind of things in Illustrator and put together the full suite here. Now, the only thing that I'm not officially doing in Illustrator is going to be editing some of these individual graphic elements. So when I was explaining to you vector versus roster graphics, um, I told you that Illustrator is specifically for vector graphics only. It's not for roster graphics. So while I can take something like this PNG with a transparent background and move it around, resize it, rotate it. I can do a lot of things with this, but I can't make actual changes to it. So you see the difference here between this type of element and something like a circle is that when I'm selecting the circle, you can see this blue line right around the circle. And when I click on this, I can get their anchor points. That means I can actually edit this piece. When I have something that's vectorized, I'll be able to change the color, I'll be able to change the shape, I'll be able to do a lot of stuff with it here. However, with a roster element, you can see that I just have this full rectangle selected. It's not around the actual shape itself. So I'm not able to change the color. I'm not able to get any anchor points and make any changes to the shape. I'm not able to do any of that editing here because this graphic is not vectorized. So in order to do that, I will use the third program, which is Adobe Photoshop. So if I were to click on this frame, for instance, I see it come up and it is already a Photoshop file, PSD. So I click on it, I can actually edit it in Photoshop. This is another benefit to using the Adobe programs is that they all talk to each other. So even though each one has slightly different purposes and things that it does best, you can use them in conjunction with each other really easily. 
You can even share what's called a library across all the different platforms. So I have a library here of all of the different things that we use as stationary designers. I'll link in the description if you're interested. So if I wanted to use a certain color swatch or um, a wax seal or ribbon color or any of my die cut shapes, like the shape of this envelope liner, for instance, I can use that across all of the different Adobe platforms because I have it saved in that Adobe library. Another way that they talk to each other is um, by linking things. So this piece is linked to Photoshop. It says linked right here. And that means that if I edit it in Photoshop, it's going to update automatically in Illustrator. And that makes it really easy to use the roster editing and the vector editing all together. So I kind of start in Illustrator with all of my different things, putting them together. But if I need to edit individual elements, I'm going to do that in Photoshop. So we've opened that frame here in Photoshop and you can now select each individual piece. You'll see all of my different layers here. And you can see that as I click on these different layers, I am able to um, make some of those changes. So let's go ahead and pull this guy out. So since I have him selected, I can do what I couldn't do in Illustrator and actually make changes to it. So I can resize, I can move things around, which I could do in Illustrator with those individual elements, but I couldn't do with the frame as a whole. And then I can also do things like erasing or changing things. So just to make it very visible, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Again, I have a whole video on this. And I'm going to change all of this kind of blue and green. Let's make it this like dark blue and pink color. This is actually kind of cool and like a creepy way. So if I click save on here, I save this file and then I return to Illustrator and it's telling me that some files are missing in the links panel. So I'll update them. And as you can see, it just kind of automatically updated to that color. Now, if I were to undo that and save, it's going to give me that same message and it'll take a second, but that will change back. So if you need to edit any of those elements, you can do that in Photoshop, but then you can bring them here to Illustrator to actually put them together with text, etc. Because it is difficult to edit text in Photoshop, and it's also difficult to have um, a lot of pieces at once in Photoshop. So just as a brief rundown, I'm gonna use Photoshop for any roster elements. This is usually watercolor, painting, photos of any sort, anything that's just like a PNG. I'm going to use Illustrator for uh, laying things out, for text, for any graphic elements, which is basically anything you think of as like a geometric shape. Um, it can get more complicated than that, but that's a good uh, way to kind of think about whether it's a shape or something like a painting. And then I'm going to use InDesign for anything where a lot of pages are somewhat similar, but not exactly like they have different text on them or something slightly different about them. Uh, but there's anything with a lot of pages I'm generally going to use InDesign for. And a lot of people do the layout and everything in InDesign. You can put these PNGs in there as well and work with them. You can do a lot of the same things. Um, it's just going to be about which layout you prefer. And I personally prefer the layout in Illustrator. And let me know what questions you have about these different design programs. I have a full Adobe playlist that will get you through through um, a lot more tutorials and how to use these things in your stationary design. And if you want to take this seriously as a designer, please check out our membership stationary school because there's a lot more information on how to work with your clients, how to design beautiful things, how to price your work, and overall just run a successful stationary business. Thanks everyone.